Orange Conference 2023. Tomorrow is hopeful. Tomorrow is hopeful. I think when we think about the word tomorrow, a couple of mantras come to mind. Uh, Eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow we die. I certainly hope not. The other mantra that comes to mind is what? The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar. Uh, The other one that comes to mind is uh, live as if there's no tomorrow, which gives us some insight on how we should live today. But leaders can't do that because we have to give hope for tomorrow. And for a lot of people, tomorrow can be very scary, especially when your boss says, hey, can we talk tomorrow? (laughs) There ain't nothing like 24 hours of pure anxiety. You know what I mean? You like, what? What you mean tomorrow? We can't talk about it right now. No, we're going to talk tomorrow. Uh, There was someone on our team at our church in Dallas uh, who one of our executives called me and said, hey, I just got to let you know, I know you're close to them, just letting you know we're letting them go this morning. And we just wanted to give you a heads up. I said, oh man, that's sad to hear. They saw me at the church and I walked away. They said, hey Ryan, see you tomorrow. I said, no you won't, they got your stuff at the front. (laughs) Have you ever had a kid tell you they were going to pay for summer camp? Tomorrow. I mean, don't we all got at least one student at our church that Jesus loves? <laughs> that if they didn't show up tomorrow, we'd be all right. You know what I mean? You don't want to admit it, but I mean, come on. Have you ever had a volunteer? tell you on a Saturday, see you tomorrow, and the next morning they're getting chicken and waffles and you got to take their spot because they're not where they were supposed to be? (laughs) I, I think in 2023, I think we all can scroll on our phones and look around and it's pretty easy to get hopeless. I think it's easy to find our hope on the ropes, especially when you've invested years, sometimes decades, into the faith of students, kids, and their families, only to see them walk away from the faith. There's nothing that will steal a leader's hope more than that. And if you minister to and hang out with and spend time with people long enough, you can find yourself losing hope, not in things, but losing hope in people. But let me tell you why I truly believe that tomorrow is hopeful. Because as flawed and disappointing as human beings are, Jesus put his hope in a crew of them to carry his gospel. So even when we lose hope in one another and lose hope in people, Jesus has put hope in us and we're part of that crew today. I do believe that there is hope for tomorrow because of Jesus And it's not just what Jesus did. It is extremely impressive for man to predict his death, burial, resurrection, and pull it off and then have breakfast with his friends. And and I'm not just impressed by what Jesus did or what Jesus pulled off. I'm impressed by who he pulled it off with. Because I don't know if you ever looked at the motley crew of jokers he chose to save the world. But if we, were, if we knew the mission was to save the world and we're watching from the heavens, we would all say, we are gonna lose, okay? There is no hope, them, are you kidding me? But he flipped the world upside down with those jokers. And I think that that gives us hope, especially given his number one draft pick <laughs> was a tax collector who walks up to Matthew and says, follow me, me," and he does. And and tax collectors weren't just guys who worked at the IRS, H&R Block. That's not what we're talking about, no. Um, 
In Jesus' day, a tax collector was someone who had conspired with the Roman government to cheat people out of money. They didn't just collect taxes by sending a letter in the mail. No, they walked around with Roman soldiers and would literally bully people out of more money than they actually owed. If you could combine the IRS and the mob, that's tax collectors in scripture. <laughs> and, and I love what happens when Jesus invites Matthew to follow him. He has a party in Mark 2, verse 16. It says, when the teachers of the law who were Pharisees saw him eating with sinners and tax collectors. Jesus is eating with sinners and tax collectors. Tax collectors were so bad, they had their own category, okay? Like, they couldn't be lumped in with the rest of the sinners. It was like, no, nah, even murderers were like, at least I'm not a tax collector, okay? <laughs> Yet Jesus chose one of them anyways. Yet Jesus put his hope in a tax collector to carry his gospel. It should give us hope that despite our weaknesses and despite our insecurities, I think Jesus is still putting his hope in us to carry the gospel to the next generation. So you and I cannot let our history keep us from reaching our destiny, we cannot let our mistakes of yesterday keep us from being who God has called us to be tomorrow. The other thing that gives me hope for tomorrow is that the people that Jesus chose had very different backgrounds. They certainly were not a part of all the same denomination. No, they were coming from some different angles. And there's just this one guy kind of hidden in the text. His name's Simon the Zealot. He's got no lines in the movie. He's got no action scenes, but don't let his lack of scenes in the movie keep you from believing that he is insignificant. No, his very name is a Netflix series of its own, Simon the Zealot. I would like for us to emphasize his zealotry for just a moment. You know, zealots were a political group who thought that the way that they could overthrow the Roman government was through violent redemption. Throughout history, these were men that carried daggers in their sleeve and they would wreak havoc in public. They would pose as regular men. Um, they did assassinations on high priests. They took ransom, like, took, like kidnapped the high priest's children. Like these were bad dudes and they thought the way that we defeat Rome is by overthrowing them. And there was a subset of zealots called the Sicarii and they lived by two rules. If you're in the presence of a Roman, they don't leave alive. Or if you're in the presence of someone who has conspired with the Roman government, they don't leave alive. Yet Jesus looks at one of these gangsters and says, I need one of you on my team. And then, you and I don't know, when Simon the Zealot, what number pick he was on Jesus' team. But at some point, they had a meet and greet. And I just want you to imagine their first small group meeting for just a moment. <laughs> Jesus walks in, hey, guys, glad you're all here, gonna save the world, no biggie. Um, this is what I want you to do. I want you to uh, tell us your name and uh, what you did before joining the band. Uh, I'm gonna change your name anyways later, so that doesn't really matter, it's okay. And so, I'll go first. Jesus of Nazareth used to be a carpenter. Nice to meet you. Peter, your turn. Hey guys, I'm the oldest here. Glad to pour into the next generation here. And uh, just, I was a fisherman, glad to be here. John, hey guys, <laughs> glad to be here, I'm a fisherman. Uh, James and Andrew, hey, we're brothers. We're happy, we're single and we're colored. Give me a high five. Just kidding, <laughs> they didn't say that. Um, the Wayne's brother said that, listen. But they say, hey guys, I want you to guess. Okay, I want you to guess what we were. Everybody goes, fisherman, that, that's it. Hey, Simon, your turn. Hey, guys, um, I, I'm, I'm Simon, but my friends call me Simon the Zealot. Whoa, 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 you got a dagger up your sleeve, bro? Like, that ain't what we about. Hey, guys, let's just chill, okay? It seems like everybody here is just a fisherman. I don't want no trouble. If we just follow Jesus, maybe we can save people from their sins. No biggie. I'm glad to be here. Matthew, <laughs> you want to tell the group what you did before you got here? Hey guys, uh, I'm the money guy. Um, 
I got us on meals. I've cheated a lot of people out of money. Um, I was a tax collector. And in that moment, Simon the Zealot has to actually make a decision if he really wants to follow Jesus. Because it's either I follow Jesus or Matthew dies tonight. <laughs> Simon the Zealot can't go home. <laughs> can't show his face because he's got Matthew the tax collector bunking above him. <laughs> Nevertheless, at some point, Simon the Zealot and Jesus had to have a conversation because Simon the Zealot is following a man that has a mantra. It's not just love your neighbor. Simon the Zealot is cool with that. It's when we get to that love your enemies part. It, it's like Jesus is pulling Simon the Zealot up close and pulling you and me up close. He's going, hey, I know you love me, but for you to love me, I need you to love Matthew. And I got a feeling that you got a Matthew in your life. I got a feeling that you got a Matthew in your ministry, a Matthew that volunteers for you. Maybe you work for a Matthew. Maybe you work with a Matthew. Maybe you married to a Matthew. Like, <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I believe hope happens when leaders act like Jesus toward their Matthew. I believe hope happens tomorrow when leaders act like Jesus towards people they should have given up on. Because Jesus didn't just see a motley crew of jokers. He didn't just look at their past and who they were yesterday. No, he saw their potential of who they could be tomorrow. And you and I are in the building today, thousands of years later, because those men carried the gospel on to their next generation. And so when I begin to think about the tall order of challenges that our leaders face in our communities and in our schools and our churches and in our politics, it's easy for me to lose hope. But then I get on a plane and I fly to Atlanta and I walk into Orange Conference 2023 and then I see hope because I see you. Because I see leaders who are willing to face the challenges that face the next generation and we're saying, hey, see you tomorrow. We ain't going nowhere and there's somebody in your community that is facing cancer there's somebody in your community that has lost hope and thank god they got you and thank god they got me because we coming ready and we're saying see you tomorrow with hope in our hearts and i think something is very powerful about what jesus pulled off and we're a part of it today. He brought together a group of people that should have never been together. And I, you know what I think is powerful for the next generation? Do you want to know what I think will give hope to the next generation? Is when they see us come together, although we are imperfect and often disagree with one another. I think there's something powerful about the next generation seeing leaders come together that make space for people they don't agree with. I think there's something powerful when Baptists and Lutherans and Methodists and Charismatics and the Assemblies of God and the non-denom people that don't think they need to go to seminary, there is something powerful <laughs> about us coming together under one name, and his name is Jesus Christ. I think when the next generation sees a faith like that that allows space for Democrats and Republicans and non-voters to come together at the table, I think what happens at that table is the same thing that happened with Matthew because the scripture tells us that Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house and many tax collectors and sinners were eating with them. You have a group of bad people who are inviting other bad people to be with the best person. And it's interesting, you know what I think? about the faith of the next generation, I think it's under attack, not because we have students and kids that are worried about their faith. They're having questions about if their faith works for their friend, and is my friend okay coming to the table? And then they get old enough and go, if it doesn't work for my friend, I'm not sure if it works for me. So I have to imagine what would happen if you and I as leaders Said, so, you know what, sometimes we lose hope in people, especially when we start to disagree with them. But imagine if we said, hey, you know what? You wanna know who does have hope? In them, Jesus. And I think the next generation doesn't need to just be encouraged to put their hope in Jesus. I think the next generation needs to be encouraged 
with the knowledge of knowing that Jesus has put his hope in them to reach their generation with the gospel. Here's what I know about every single one of our churches. We have somebody who's thinking about inviting a friend and the whole time they're doing this. And they hope it's good. And they hope they can bring their family, their, they hope they can bring their colleague, they hope that they can bring their neighbor, they hope that they can invite their friend to the gym because they, and my prayer is that we would be the church of tomorrow. May you and I remember that Jesus, as flawed as we are, put his hope in us to carry the gospel to the next generation and when our hope is on the ropes, may you and I fix our focus on the hope of the world and attempt to paste his ways into our leadership from our stages to our dinner tables. May you and I be the kind of leaders that give people reason to believe that tomorrow is hopeful. Jesus, I thank you so much for Orange Conference 2023. And God, may we be the reason that somebody puts their hope in you tomorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody sit.